We want to talk about uh, motion of a particle along a curved path described by um, Car Cartesian system, meaning, you know, X, Y, Z. So let's say if you have an object which is traveling along a, uh, a curved path, so you have this object, this object is traveling in this direction. Uh, one, of, one way that you could describe the motion of this particle is to use a position vector. Now this position vector, you need a reference. So let's say if your reference is here, x, y, and say z. And you could use what we call a position vector, which I'm going to call it r. So r here is a position vector. So as this particle moves from one point to another, this r keeps changing. Let's say if this R is given in terms of its component, so Xi, Yj, and Zk. And X, Y, and Z are changing with time. So now let's go ahead and define velocity. Velocity is defined as rate of change of this position vector, dr dt. So if you go ahead and take the derivative of r, which is xi plus yj plus zk. Now normally what you have to do is that you, you look at xi or yj or zk, and you have to really uh, look at this. And let me just do it once here. So basically you have to say, okay, we take the derivative of x with respect to time. We multiply it by i, and I would be using the uh, product rule. Derivative of the first times second plus first, which is x, times the derivative of the second. And you could do this for all of them like that, y, j, and z, k. But now the question is, what is the derivative of i with respect to time, the unit vector i? Now the unit vector i has a magnitude of 1, and the unit vector i, basically, its direction, it never changes. It's always horizontal. Therefore, if a vector has constant magnitude and constant direction, its derivative has to be zero. So this term disappears. So you're only left with dx dt i. Similarly, you would be left with dy dt j and dz dt k. So one way we could write this, so dx dt, basically, you can call it x dot. And then similarly, you get a y dot. Now, x dot and y dot, they just simply mean time derivative. And the z dot, okay. So, velocity is simply described in this form, x dot i, y dot j, and z dot k. And x dot is the x component of velocity, for example. So this is the x component. This is the y component of velocity. And this is the z component of velocity. So let me go to the next page. Let's say if you want to find the magnitude of the velocity now. Magnitude of velocity would be square root of x component squared, which is x dot squared, y component squared, which is y dot squared, and z component of velocity squared, which is z dot squared. This is the magnitude of velocity. And vectorially would be x dot i, y dot j, and z dot k. Now we can go a step further and take the uh, find acceleration. So acceleration is the derivative of velocity. Now remember, we just defined velocity in, in the last page. Velocity was what? x dot i plus y dot j plus z dot k. So again, as you do products rule, since the derivative of the unit vectors are zero, what will happen is that now we get the derivative of x dot becomes the second derivative of x, which is x double dot times i plus y double dot times j plus z double dot times k. And then similarly, we could say that this is the x component of acceleration, x double dot. This is the y component of acceleration, and this is the z component of acceleration. And again, if you want to find the magnitude of acceleration, magnitude, just like velocity here, uh, 
we would do the square root of you know x dot x double dot squared plus y double dot squared the y component of acceleration plus z double dot squared and that would be the magnitude of acceleration